we will now solve a problem in rotational dynamics. So this is a problem in rotational dynamics. And the problem is as follows. There is a big disk that is free to rotate about this Z1 axis. And on it, there is mounted a small disk. And uh, both are free to rotate about their respective symmetry axes. And the parameters of the problem, disk 1, this is disk 1, and it has a mass m1, radius r1, and moment of inertia i1, moment of inertia to rotate about the axis z1. Similarly, this is the, this is the disk this, d2, m2, r2, I2, and this distance is R. This is the distance between the axis Z1 and Z2. The problem is as follows. We apply a force F tangential to, uh, to this D2, such that this force F is uh, perpendicular to the line joining to this line. So if you look from top, we will see that here's the big disk and here's the small disk. And uh, a force F is applied for a short time such that FDT is J impulse. Uh, uh, so, force is applied uh, for a short time. The question is, what is alpha 1, what is alpha 2, and similarly, what is omega 1, omega 2? Alpha 1 and omega 1 are the angular acceleration and velocity of the big disk, and alpha 2 and omega 2 similar quantities for the small disk. Okay. This is the problem. And we start analyzing it. Let's look at the uh, small disk. Here is the disk. And here is an axis. We apply force F. This is R2. But we should consider the disk subtracting the axis. Okay. So when you apply a force F, this will axis will uh, apply a counter force N. And the equation uh, of motion for the disk is easy to write. Uh, F minus N, that's the net force in the horizontal direction, the horizontal plane, acting on the disk. That is M2 times A2. A2 is the acceleration of the mass M2, this one. But you see, if it moves, subtending an angle delta theta, uh, that, uh, since the axis moves, that means the big disk is rotating. Okay? So A2 is nothing but A2 is simply R times this R, because this distance is R, R times 
alpha 1. So that's about the small disk. What about the big disk? Here's the big disk. Here, that's the position of the small disk. So, action reaction force, there's an N here. And of course, this disk is not moving anywhere, the axis is fixed. So, the uh, axis is applying a force equal and opposite to N. So, this is R and NR is equal to I1 times alpha 1. So these are the dynamical equations. This is F equals MA, this is the kinematical constraint, and this is the torque equals uh, moment of inertia times the angular acceleration. Now how many equations? We have three equations. How many unknowns? We don't know A2, alpha 1, and N. So we can solve them all. <coughs> F minus, for N, I will write this one, I1 alpha 1 divided by R. I1 alpha 1 divided by R is equal to M2 A2. R alpha 1. So if I multiply by R and take it to this side, Fr is equal to I1 plus M2 R square alpha 1 and alpha 1 is equal to Fr over I1 plus M2 R square and if we apply a time integral to this because force, this force is uh, time is very short and its time integral is j here. So if we apply this thing to, to that equation, then omega 1 is equal to j r over i1 plus m2 r square. And All right. What about the uh, rotation of the uh, small disk? F R two. So uh, rotation of D two about Z two. N does not give a, a torque about this axis. Only this force gives. So F times R two is I2 times alpha 2. Therefore, alpha 2 is FR2 over I2. Or if we apply dt for a sh this thing, this becomes omega 2 is equal to JR2 over I2. So that's the... Uh, now, Another thing about the forces, these are the forces, I only uh, wrote these forces that are uh, necessary to find omega 1 and omega 2. But uh, you see, there is another force on the small disk because here is a, this is D2 and the center is are away from here, Z1 is coming up, okay. So this distance is R. So this mass is, uh, the central mass of this thing is on a circle. So to keep it on a circle, there must be a, uh, axis must be applying a centripetal force to it. So N prime will be equal to <coughs> M2 V2 over R square. V2 is 
v2 square over r. So this is m2. This is omega 2 square r square over r. R is cancelled. So it is m2 omega 2 square r. So uh, there is a force in addition to this n. There is a force like this n prime to keep the uh, central mass of the disk in orbit uh, about this z1 axis. So if there is n prime uh, there, on the big disk, so I will now write all the forces. Since we saw find omega 1 and omega 2, I erased uh, the equations. Let's just look at the picture. On D2, forces are F, N, and N prime. N prime is that centripetal force to keep it. And how about the big disk? Here is N. And therefore, there is an n prime here. Uh, but this, this, this is not going anywhere. So, and of course, there is an n here. So, the net force to move uh, on the disk to move it in the horizontal plane is, is zero. There are a few more things I want to mention. Uh, if you look at omega 1, in the denominator we see I1 plus M2 R square. Why is that? I2 is not there. There is no I2 there. Why is that? That's because uh, the effective moment of inertia of rotation about the Z1 axis is I1, that's the big disk, and only the central mass of the uh, small disk. That's because of the condition that it was free to rotate about the axis. Okay. Axis itself is not applying any force to uh, rotate it. Be just because it's free to rotate, we don't have an I2 there. For example, if I'm erasing these equations and uh, these force pictures. Let me just erase this part. So, locked in, namely, it is held fast here. It is, uh, in that case, uh, the torque would be F R plus R2 would be equal to I1 plus I2 plus M2 R square omega. And omega would be, uh, sorry, alpha. And omega would be, you, you apply this time, time integral, J r plus r2 divided by i1 plus i2 plus m2 r square. Okay, that's the locked in position. Namely, two disks rotate as a, a single object. I want to comment, uh, I want to make a, one or two more comments. Let me erase these. Suppose, uh, again, D2, I'm coming back to the, this was a parenthesis, I'm back to the original problem, D2 is free to rotate about the Z2 axis. Uh, D, uh, we apply the force on D2 like this. Instead, 
apply f as what would change? You see, omega 1 does not change. The only uh, change comes with omega 2, which now rotates in the other direction. Okay. So whether we apply, of course, these are pa parallel. So uh, so whether we apply the force F here or F there for the rotation of the big disk, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, but the rotation of the small disk is affected with the same angular velocity, in this case uh, turning uh, in a left-handed way and in, the, in this one turning in the right-handed way. How about if I apply the force directly to the... Uh, this is D2 again. So what about if I apply the force directly to here? Again, the rotation omega 1 will be the same, but this time uh, d2 will not rotate at all. Okay, uh, I leave it to uh, students. A small extension of this problem. I will not solve it, but I will just state the problem. Here is this thing. D2. So this time apply the force on the big disk, F. And study it for both cases. One, D2 is free to rotate. Two, D2 is locked in. find out the angular velocities of these uh, of the big disk d1 and the small disk d2 okay that's it